Yeah, yeah, well, next time we uh, come, come over, we'll schedule a time for you to come over. Got a break? Yeah. Got a break? Hello, Chicken123, 123, yeah. 123. How's it going, man? It's going good? Yeah, sure. sure. Is, uh, it as, is it as hot as you look? Oh, God, it's so sweetie. Eh? It's <laughs> not making all this audio routing any easier. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so she can yeah, come on, on me. On I can hear him. I can hear Okay. Yeah. Just said. We've just got some visitors. Yeah. Hey, kia ora, kia ora. It's here tonight. Yeah, She's going to come and join hey, us on Saturday. Wait. Yeah, kia ora, Irina. So, um, your dad's just entertaining um, his yeah, sister to start the stream, stream and then he's going to come and join us, I think. There he is. Oh, we can. Oh, yeah. Um, that's Irina from, um, Magic. Magic. from the Magic Netball team. Look, she's got a squat to do, do photos with them. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Classic. Six for three. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. I have to get what the one shot next day. Is she coming next week? I hope it's two I get in. Yeah. I get in. Yeah, say Kyoto. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say Kyoto on the uh, oh, yeah, on yeah. the camera on this this that one that one. The other one. There you go. Kyoto. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Now we need. Then I wear two boy cheap G. Hey, G mate. Sure. Yeah. We could have quite catch up with each other when. Uh, the Tai Tokero. So I see you on Instagram. Been hanging up in the Tai Tokero. DLT. I hit the radio. Sure. Sure. Broom. Cut a shit. Sure, as in Jawan. Broom. Broom. Way up in, uh, in the Never Never Lands. Western Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez, we're complaining about the heat here. Imagine what it's like there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, totally. Uh, I can't. So good to see you. Uh, I just finished coming through from another one, and I is uh, the, the, the young lady from the uh, magic, magic from the magic team. Um, uh, we're running a uh, a training program about uh, elevation, moving over to how do we get ourselves to, you know, sometimes we get we get stuck in the corner here, and it, uh, I think I'll just stay there. But uh, we need to uh, to move forward. Take it to another level, yeah. And so, uh, well, no, uh, here we are. See, um, so we're here for um, 2022. Uh, uh, I went for my. Um, so we went over to. Um, I went over to my uh, 50 years uh, memory lane over there on last week. I think it was uh, Wednesday or Thursday last week. And I made my way all the way up to uh, Waitangi. And uh, I did stop down at um, Weio Mio, at the party that we stayed there 50 years ago. And, uh, and uh, Kei Aapina us uh, during that period of time with the Kaumatua, with the Rangatira of the place. And uh, then I made my way to Waitangi to the site itself, but uh, nobody there. Well, not on the Malay anyway, because uh, they um, put a rahui on the place. But there were some other people around there. They, they fuck a uh, They're having their bit of a hui hui around the, around the complex. And um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I stayed there, took some photos, put it on the Instagram, and then went across right, uh, right over to um, uh, to Rawene, to Rawene, over to Hukiana, fuck a pokerakia. And uh, spent the night over there, and then the next day uh, I went across with Hulia and uh, Joss, and uh, we went around there, and um, yeah, it escorted me all the way up to um, uh, across the ferry, and it escorted me over to um, to Kaitaia, and over to uh, Waimanoni, and just uh, north of Kaitaia, and to a Huda to a comrade. 
and uh, who passed there about a year ago. So I made my way up there, and then I shoo, hit down, down to Tamaki Makaurau the same day. Yeah, yeah, so I hang up with some mates over there for a couple of days, and then uh, head back uh, day before yesterday, I think. Oh, it's my, yeah, day before yesterday. And, uh, and so here we are, yeah, here's our show. Mm. So what are we going to talk about today yeah, here? There was a bit of a trip. Yep. Yes, I've uh, done a bit of a mileage there on my truck. And, and, and so, so, just to explain, it was 50 years since what? Well, 50 years is the first time I uh, been to Auckland, 50 years ago. Uh, in uh, 1971, New Year's Eve, I uh, made a, um, a, uh, a hitchhike dump like that on New Year's Eve, or all the way from Barbados Street, and I hitch a ride, or one of the mates dropped me off down Belfast, and hitch all the way up through to, uh, to Wellington. And then my last ride, it might have been about a couple of hours before midnight, and uh, I got picked up up in, um, in Huntley, and just sort of kind of outskirt of Huntley, and the guy called Possum picked me up. Now, Possum happened to be living in the back house where I was heading to on Margaret Street in Ponsonby. When Ponsonby used to be Polynesian, the hippies, uh, you know, and uh, the marijuana smell, and uh, so it's quite, quite totally different back in those days. I think there's so still a marijuana smell in, uh, in, in Ponsonby at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so we... Um, so, so that, that was really me, and he, he, he dropped me off there, and uh, Toto was not there. Toto was actually over in uh, working. He was working in the restaurant, so I, yeah, so, so that was 50 years ago. And, uh, and then I hang around there, Mote Tahi, uh, for a few weeks, until on, um, I think it was the third or the fourth of February, 1972. And then we got a bus, and full of the radicals, and uh, and then we bust all the way up to where that took us all day. I mean, literally all day it was an all day trip. These days it's just hours, and uh, so that was a bit of a journey going all the way up there. And we stay at Wayomu, the Marae there right on the main road, just before Kawako. And uh, they didn't have a Pare Puni and a Pare there where Wayomu is up at the back of the um, where the caves are. And uh, the co march over there really took care of us. And then uh, we hang around down at the bottom, at the, the bottom of the house. So um, prior to our arrival there, as we're going through there, there was a propaganda in front of the, uh, of the hero, uh, claiming to that the gang up in Auckland, uh, not the head hunters. Oh, I can't remember the name of the, of the, of the, of the King group. Cobras. No, not that one. And, uh, but there was a game, they put it up there, they were going to come and beat us up, kick us out of the, uh, off the ground, up the top there. But that was all propaganda, it wasn't even true. And uh, they were there, in their German helmets and uh, in the gangster gears. And uh, in fact, one of those guys ended up living with me down in uh, Ruatoki uh, a year later. And um, so we made our way, so, the idea of the protest up in Waitangi in 1950 years ago was to march all the way up to the top. And the sooner they go and start the ceremony like they do every Waitangi day, we were going to boycott that part of it. Um, so that was Nga Tamato. You go up there and then, then they march out, but I didn't. I stayed there. Yeah, so I remained there on site. And uh, I didn't feel that I, I need to follow everybody out down to the bottom. So as soon as that the um, as soon as the um, the bell or something, the signal saying go, and then there it was. And then there was a couple haka team, Kingi Hihaka, the Reverend Kingi Hihaka team, couple haka from Auckland. They are Anglican, uh, the Anglican group, couple haka. Uh, they were there, and so they did their haka. So as soon as they did their haka. I did my haka, so I did my haka down down the bottom below the uh, uh, the um, uh, the um, yeah the flag, 
down there. Do you remember and, the uh, there was a there was a navy guy there with their in the, in the uniform and their guns, and there was also the police force was there too. And so uh, so I made my way towards to the party, uh, to the treaty house, and uh, and doing my blah 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 blah, and um, you know and uh, and then and I think. The, um, the police was instructed by, by the co at the, at the bar there you know, to remove me off site. So the cops kind of picked me up and literally picked me up, two of them, and they threw me out, uh, out of the site. So uh, there was a 50 years there in, uh, in the memory lane. Um, so I went all the way up to, uh, to Waitangi, Hare Pireira, uh, where no. Me, 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 I think the Minister of Māori Affairs there during that period of time was under the national government. And uh, I can't remember who was the Prime Minister then, but I know that the Minister of Māori Affairs at that time was a guy called uh, Duncan McIntyre. I'm trying to remember the same names. There was Duncan McIntyre. And in fact, uh, some of my... Uh, uh, tribal representative was uh, happened to be there. Uh, reported my uh, uh, what I was doing up in Waitangi, and uh, I bumped into them having a secret meeting at uh, now it's called the um, uh, the Tiroho Marae. Was then it was used to be uh, the Presbyterian Church uh, building. So I we Hati Ponika and I busted them having a secret meeting. And uh, they were going to have sent a, uh, a letter of an apologies uh, to my behaviour uh, over in, uh, in Waitangi. So that was my 50 years, uh, Tipi Haere there to, um, uh, to Waitangi uh, 50 years ago. And yeah, you, yeah. And you and would and have been the ripe, the ripe old age of 20. Yeah, yeah. I would have been about 20 year. years old. And because it, then I was. Because it was a process. You, you, you got to understand that what what actually took me to that place. You know, I was a quiet, so naive about things uh, in 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 the, in the late sixties. She was in the late sixties. Um, I just going through those first sixteen years, seventeen years of my life. You know, and so in the first seventeen years, you know, you. When they made you, when things were happening right in front, racism was pretty out there. So it wasn't a hidden, a hidden thing at all. So we weren't in the plan, we weren't in the conversation at all. And so, um, and so, um, and so, we set up a little wee group there. It used to be the Lib Māori Liberation Front it was myself, uh, Eduera Te Nia. It's a fight called My Chadwick. Steve Watson, I just got a letter from him last year. It's a real long letter, but he was one of the one of the guys, and uh, that was just a little wee small group, and uh, and then we viewed the, the protest of 1971, 51 years ago, and there was Na Tamatua up in uh, up in Waitangi, and I thought, bang, we're gonna I'm gonna make it there, and. Um, I think Paul Kotara was one of our members of us up there. So he was the one that arrived back here from, well, from up north and uh, made his way down with his, uh, with his, uh, with our other Fanonas. He was a hapu to, uh, to their baby. And um, she's from Matata. Uh, she's a um, Benny Rauriti. And Benny was down there. The Benny and Andrew, so Benny, Benny Rauriti and, um, and Paul Kotara were the ones that reported the activities up in Waitang in 19, 1971. So that uh, inspired me to go up there. Because by then we we already gone through the experience of been living in Christchurch. And Christchurch is really, I mean, I tell you, it was a hardcore racist. And, uh, Anyway, so we, we didn't um, uh, help us to, uh, we could have said nothing and go to sleep and take a blind eye out of it. But I didn't. And a few of us went there. So we, uh, we put our face out there. We went there and uh, whittled Yarata. 
And, uh, and then we started doing some fundraising. There was a band called Butler, uh, run by the guy um, uh, Steve Apidan from uh, Ruatahuna. And so, so they had a, you know, so what do you mean? Don't go, don't fall asleep. But yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, that's a story. That's a story there uh, around for um, for 50 years ago. Goodbye, Ash. Yeah. Is Ash falling asleep? I don't They're know. They're just commenting uh, on you, your, 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 your picture. Hey, kia ora tama, koe e hoa. We, we, we're still coming down to Wellington e hoa. Oh, sorry, what was that, bro? I can't hear you. I was, I was saying, I was just thinking, I think he's commenting on the Zoom photo that we posted. I know what? Of Dad asleep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when you're in the Zoom, you fell asleep in the middle of our hui with, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Choice. On our next art project. Yeah, cheeky bugger. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Dad. So yeah, you need to you turn your volume up, you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you, you, we've lost oh, you a little bit. There, right? I just, just hear you. Maybe pull uh, your okay, mic up. Uh, Get into that mic. Hey, we've got a few people joining from uh, Australia. Check. Kia ora, Ruben, over in Coffs Harbour. We, um, we, our grandparents on our mother's side are actually from Port Macquarie, which isn't far from Coffs Harbour. Oh, oh. So, tēnā Which one is that? Uh, Reuben May Edwards over in, in Coffs Harbour, New South Wales. Oh, okay. And then uh, uh, Lonnie Wano, Kia ora te Whanaunga, over in Perth. Yeah, and Taumutu, you're saying, are yeah, they too? Tēnā koe, Taumutu. Uh, Rawari, all the, all the cousins. Kia ora, kia ora, Rawari. Or is that our uncle Ra- Rawari? Uh, oh, the oh. I can't see the profile pic. Well, with the Ichi, it might be the bro. Might be uncle, eh? Yeah, yeah, might be the bro. Yeah, so hey, I can you hear the Ichi? Yeah, yeah. So, um. How you there, bro? Yeah, Hello. What was the past thing? Uh, yeah. Where did it? Uh, do you remember the haka that you did 50 years ago? Can you do it now? Um. Yakutapu! Immediately everybody knew where they had come from. And uh, of course, Kamate. And uh, of course, uh, Kamate was uh, a very popular haka. And Still then I just, I just made up a whole lot of different haka because it's, it's, it's a language thing. Because once you know the language, you can say anything. And, uh, and I think they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. I uh, was a little bit, uh, a little bit abusive, but uh, you know, that's that kind of language. You, you were a bit of a hard band in your 20s, weren't you? Oh, no, very, very, very hard. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very much uh, motivated by that. Um, it, it wasn't really an easy road for us to be um, in that period of time to have an opinion. You know, because everything was geared up how to be a Pākehā and how to be allowed to yourself to be colonised. Holy Oak was the pr- Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mr Holy Ghost. But uh, there was another, there was another fellow there just after that. He, he was already finished. And, uh, but his son-in-law, uh, Keen, Keen was, uh, was also there too. Uh, I just try and get, Jack Marshall was the Prime Minister you know, of that time. Maybe. Jack Marshall. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just having a jack. Mm-hmm. You glad to be uh, back, Dad? So, sorry, uh, wait a minute. Can you speak up louder? Oh uh, yeah, too. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll definitely. turn myself up in your. In... Um, I'm just saying, are you glad to be back? Because you did. What else did you do over the summer? So you you went for a little bit of a tamaiti tour. Yeah, I did, uh, went to do a tamaiti uh, because because uh, I'm um, because I know that we were busy. We will be very busy uh, this year. We'll talk about that uh, later on. We can all talk about that. What that is, and uh, I thought I. Yeah, some, sometimes I'm stuck here in these little wee bubbles, and um, seriously, you know, I'm stuck in these little wee bubbles, and I sometimes I find it very difficult to, to get myself out of it. Uh, only that I, um, 
you know, I, I think it's a, it, it's, a, it's a moment of creativity and uh, you, you get inspired and I, but I never ever ever felt how I feel now that I now I know what freedom is about. A freedom to be able to do what I want to do. Okay, and so um, in, in, in me. Because uh, after so many years doing things for Na Tamoto Tennis Protection Association, for the Communist Party, for the Marae, for the Hapu, for Waikato, for the Arawatana, for the trade union movement, uh, you know, there's a few of us that spend our whole life really around that. And you, you tend to forget about yourself. And, and so I, um, you know, and um, so um, I've been, been like that ever since the, the COVID. And uh, to me, that the lockdown is supposed to happen. It meant to happen. And because Mother Earth needed to have a bit of a, a tone down. Karema, seriously, yeah, seriously, you need to tone down a bit. And uh, you know, we then uh, during the first year of the COVID of the lockdown, I thought that was fantastic. You know, because things have started to appear and things that we don't normally. And I'm sure, you know, and uh, you can even feel it. I, I know after about six months you can actually feel the, the whole energy sort of like that and I go wow the whole world is on the slow down totally on the slow down you know and so we got to keep reminding ourselves the death to our population was really came through what happened to the disease that came through this country we are na mate koraha, na mate koraha i runa i a tātou o tērā i nā mate huhua i whakai ke hia mai ke runa i a tātou. And I think that um, Mother Earth needs the space because it's, it's poison, full of poison, full of rubbish, full of us, our rubbish. And, and um, I mean, all we just go, just go out there and have a look. And so what is this noticeable during in the lockdown in the last, last two years, now going to our third year, is that you start hearing things. You start seeing birds at places that you don't normally see it. Uh, they still need more big, I mean, I, I live in Uruatuki. We don't hardly see any manu, manu, na manu, or, ten, or uh, na manu atani. The only money we see there, the black birds and all the other birds, doesn't even belong to there. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so even you had to go even having difficulties hearing some of those birds up in the hills. So tērā kōri o tērā, um, there's an issue about the drinking water, we don't have clean water to drink. So uh, a, a lot of people are buying water, or well, a lot of people are going to our friend's house down the road here on, on Wainui and pulling their tanks up and uh, tērā kōre o tērā karema. Yeah, so that's it. So uh, maybe the boys can talk about what's, uh, what's, in, what's ahead of us while I carry on painting. Oh, seems a bit Ill. doom, doom and gloom now. We, we got <laughs> no drinking water. Through to the birds aren't singing. <laughs> Um, that's interesting, Dad, that you feel like you're getting actually a little bit of uh, more freedom that started with COVID, and you know, there's a lot of people saying that they have lost their freedoms because of COVID. So that's a uh, little bit of a uh, yeah, well, contrast. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, that's the whole issue. It's a real debate. As we see people, uh, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and so they're talking about freedom. I'm not too sure what freedom they're talking about. Um, I mean, we, we, come from, uh, we, we come from a culture that has been put down and lit down, but I think that, that, that there are opportunity and that there are people accusing me of, of accepting government money uh, for uh, supporting the, uh, the jab. And I, said, I don't know. I mean, hey, I don't know where they got their corner from. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, no, we're... I am not Wait, receiving the, money they, from the Crown. What's not that, bro? Do they think that you're being paid to advocate for the jab? Is yeah. That, is yeah, that... yeah, yeah. Well, we live in an age where anyone can say anything at any time. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have to back that up with any sense of facts. They just say it. And yeah, 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 yeah. They say it. Yeah, so yeah. And, and, I heard and, someone uh, say it once, and so it must be true. It's, yeah, um, yeah. So, so there's no need for those sort of accusations and uh, pointing the finger. So, okay, two buttons of it, but the way we will get Yeah, And they have also, like you were, you were saying, you know, Kamate was a popular um, haka back in the day and still a popular haka, and it's been co opted by that, by that, the particular anti vax or the freedom um, movement that made its convoy down in the last couple of days down to Wellington. They actually set up also a, um, a tent embassy of sorts. They will set all their tents up down on Parliament grounds there. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like you fellas uh, 50 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people can do whatever they want to do. And that's what you believe in it. If you feel good, good about it, but uh, and, uh, and trying to point the finger on something not even true, you know. Well, uh, I had first hand. Eh? I had first hand. Um, you having trouble hearing me, eh, Dad? No, no, something's up with your mic, actually. It's kind of no, no, no. I can at, hear you. I can hear you but now. It, it does certainly sound a little bit more muffled than it was uh, pre-stream. Maybe okay. wiggle your cords. Sure <laughs> I did. I was just saying. I, I, I had first-hand um, experience with uh, that whole. They just say it, and then it becomes the truth in the in the land of you know across the land with the um, sound splash as the super spreader. Oh yeah. Oh. That's right, you were, you, because you do ops management for Sound Splash and it became a super spreader event and... No, it didn't become a fucking super spreader. Okay, like a super okay, okay, what touchy spot. Was, <laughs> what, I don't know, I'm just like, it's it, it, like, that That was the thing, right? So the, 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 we were the last festival of the summer. We, everyone was talking about the fact that the whole country had been moved to uh, tra red traffic light. And because we were the last festival and we had some kids that had come to the festival with with uh with it and then tested for it uh it was like oh yeah sound splash could be a super spreader potential super spreader but when they just when they realize that it's not actually a super spreader no one actually comes back and says oh yeah no nah, no nah, that's not that's not what happened they just stop reporting on it so yeah. it's just uh and it's just like what you're saying dad is that there's that you know People go, oh yeah, Tamiyeti got paid to uh, um, to get the jab, and so they don't come back and when they when that's disproved, they don't come back and go, oh no, sorry, got that wrong. It's even worse when it is actually the media who do that, you know. So the they will use sensational headlines to. Um, hang on, I'm just going to spray this guy because god damn it, they're annoying. Um, you they they will use sensationalised headlines, but when it proves not to be that, they don't go back and retract. Unless you go and take a broadcasting standards of a BSA against them, and then they will do a retraction on page 29. There'll be a little paragraph there, and and um, you're lucky if anybody reads it. Um, yeah, that's that, that certainly. The, it, it, I think it is even more disconcerting when when the media do it, but yet, yeah. in general, people can say whatever they want these days um, on yeah. Facebook and then suddenly that gets shared and yeah. Hey, Aye. so uh, um, I just got a text from someone, bro, your mic is dropping off. I think it might be on your side, like a cord or something. Okay, okay, cool, yo, thank you. Oh uh, yeah, loud now. I could be the noise cancellation happening uh, on the Zoom call. So I might have to run for some. Oh, rice, 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 rice. Uh, Tuhoi Chief, kia ora Tuhoi Chief. I found myself countless times defending you. I'm sure he's talking to you, Dad. Oh, uh, yeah. In the face of these vex accusations. Now I'm a prominent user of TikTok since my mother order and carrying the name Tuhoi on there. Oh, kia ora. Are you, are you Tuhoi Chief on uh, TikTok too? I have to um, check you out, cuz. 
Two war chief. Oh, yeah. Hello. So, um, what are you painting there, Dad? I'm uh, not too sure. Oh, okay. I just painting. It's a lucky dip. Oh, that too, Hoy. That too, Hoy, on TikTok. Um... I've been loving TikTok. TikTok's um, <coughs> you're very good on that. Uh, toy. It's a little bit different. Mm. Yeah, I know. I think I'm just lazy, to be honest. Eh? I think I'm just lazy. It takes you know a bit of thought. Uh, lazy and maybe a, a bit too much of a perfectionist. I kind of like, you know. Uh, I fear I that if I start. Uh, I was re-watching the four videos that you've got on at the moment, bro, and they were, um, they were hysterical. And that, that poor comp uh, that boil-up one is awesome as well. Yeah. I know, but that's the problem. You start doing that stuff and you got to kind of keep it up. And um, I kind of suck at that. You know, the other thing is, too, is like, this is, it's just so loud out there these days. It's, I mean, I know we're here doing the stream and, you know, um, having our say on this little platform here. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, um, there's so many reckons out there and so many things. I, I, I've actually set up, you might notice, I, I don't, oh no, you might, you might notice, I took a few of the lights in the green screen and um, one of our Sony EV, CV10s home. Um, and was having a play. And yeah, I'll probably do some more stuff. But um, thank you. Thank you, my bro. You think I'm. It was hilarious, hysterical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the Whitaker stuff, stuff is funny as shit, man. This is uh, like, it's good to be able to, but I, I, you can tell there's a lot of, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into it. Yeah, it's just getting that workflow. Yeah, it is, it is trying to get that workflow. And, and, and to tell the truth, you know, cutting on, on, um, cutting on TikTok is odd, is weird. So I was wanting to go into the editing software that I'm used to using and, um, and use that, but I haven't quite got the workflow between going from the piece from the camera to the PC to the phone um, without tripping over myself. So that two boy uses. You need a teenager to help you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, there you are, bro. That two boy, two boy promoting a good space to share knowledge, Kai. And cryptic man. Mean. I'll buy you what? I'll check you out. Always need new creators. Well, hang on. I'll give you a instant follow, eh? There you go. Got a two-boy chief. Aroha Hathaway. Hey, kia ora, Aroha. Hello. We should get you on here to do some infomercials. For us. Words from our sponsors. Um, yeah, McKean. How, how, did you sort that mic out? Did you get your headphones on, bro? I think it is the noise cancelling. It's got that sort of feel about it. I just, uh, I was just, I just was monitoring it on the main line there, so I just, I'm just turning it up a bit on my. Is that better? Can you? Hear it? Still kind of no? sucks. Yeah. I oh, know the um, the headphones are charging, so stand by. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, but so uh, you were doing Sound Splash, bro, and you had to move from Raglan to Mystery Creek, and everybody in the um, the festival sector getting smashed by COVID. But you guys just managed to slip on in there. Yeah, it's a bit of a. Uh bit of a running joke for us at the moment in terms of how we just managed to it's it's us lab and um what's the one down south um oh the uh rhythm and alps rhythm and alps yeah it's the three the three of us the the three bosses were all talking about potentially getting together uh buying some lot of um, tickets because 
or doing some some kind of pagan ritual you know strip down run around the forest giving thanks because they they just always just manage to squeeze in before the shit hits the fan and everyone else gets cancelled so um so yeah we were pretty lucky uh to 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 kind of fall on the right side of it but um yeah there's been a lot of and a lot of the crew from sound splash and some of these other places um that you know had their gigs pulled out from underneath them overnight so um there has um and uh yep and so the government's responded and, and given an extra i think they added, sorry i can't remember the number 30 yeah that's right 70 mil. yeah so underwriting, so, um, underwriting if there's anyone the on, on here yeah, hey, shout, just quickly shout out to um, and... shouting out to Steve the Goat, uh, you follower on on Twitch. That's a good little gift you bang up there. Oh, right? Was that a subscription? Is that a subscription one or is that a, a follow? Just a, a follow. What one popped up? Was that the uh... oh, dad in his know. ass? Oh yes, yeah, that's a sub. Oh. Steve the Goat. Yeah about um yeah anyway there's money out there it's coming uh you know keep your ears open and your eyes open um everyone's kind of uh putting some stuff out so that there's some um, there's support particularly for those ones that have uh, lost income and uh, they've extended it out um you know for for income that's been lost uh up to the end of the year I have to double check that anyway there's going to be a big um we're going to do a thing through the music industry stuff that um where we uh sort of answer some questions and um and point you in the right direction depending on what it is that you are doing yeah but it's hard out man i feel sorry for a lot of a lot of people who have uh who are missing out just as inflation is hitting i read a good article um the bro Nando, who I'd love to get on here and talk some local government stuff and you know really entertain everybody. Um, actually, is it, it's good talking local government with the bro, but he put up he posts really thoughtful um, posts and articles uh, on Facebook, which I always really enjoy. And uh, one article he posted was regarding the uh, the fact that the government has had to print a lot of money, which they call quantitative easing. So they they you know, issue bonds and they've got various mechanisms to be able to print money. Um, but of course, what tends to happen when you print money is uh, there's more supply of cash and it loses its value, which shows itself as the increase of prices, which is inflation. Um, so they, uh, that's what we're starting to see now, is that inflation hit and then the lever that they have to uh, try to keep that inflation at bay and not let it get out of control like it has in um, uh, places like Zimbabwe where you've got to carry around a wheelbarrow of cash to buy a can of coke um, is lifting interest rates to restrict the supply of cash so we're going to see that as well so it's quite hard on the artists as all of this is happening all at once um, and they were just talking about actually, you know, with the relief to businesses and it's kept some businesses, uh, kept those businesses with their head above the water by giving uh, the wage subsidies and so forth. But those wage subsidies haven't necessarily trickled down to the workers that the businesses themselves have been able to maintain and keep themselves um, uh, above water and instead of crashing and drowning. Um, but that the money hasn't necessarily trickled its way down. I mean, you're talking about big companies like Harvey Normans and you know some of those multinationals who have gotten millions in wage subsidies uh, and are still issuing uh, dividends to their shareholders. Yeah. But wages haven't gone up. And so that's what the article is about, that actually a lot of that taxpayer money and distribution of funds has been you know soaked up by the private sector and the the ethical um decision to be paying dividends to shareholders when you have already you know when you've taken a, a government handout via a wage subsidy whether or not that is a um um an ethical decision 
um, but they'll just say, well, we, we can because the regulations surrounding those particular um, wage subsidies were potentially underdeveloped because, you know, they were just trying to get the money out there. Um, anyway. I think we lost about 30 viewers while I talked about inflation. No, it's, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, it, it, it is, uh, you know, relevant to what's going on around us. It's all part of the craziness. And, um, yeah, people are gonna. People are finding it pretty hard, and um, is uh, and I think also they find it quite confusing where, where that support can come from. I mean, I know that with the musicians and stuff like that um, that I I work with, and um, uh, it's there, but it's just making sure that um, that people know that they they're entitled to it. Is it enough? I guess that's a subjective question, you know never enough you know you just want things they're to pretty go back much to underwriting normal, so. it aren't they so they are uh, it could be a boon to some who may not have perhaps sold out their concert you know or their tour and basically the government saying that they will cover as if they did sell out or are they covering like 80 percent mm. no so, so it's 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 yeah there, are, there is criteria i mean you're, you're talking about one specific one and that's the insurance side of things which is actually done through mb and that's and that, as your event um you get 90 percent of invoice cost this is about cost it's not about profits right and it's right. what it's it's to stop you from losing and not coming back because you've lost all your money to put your festival on and, and your expenses that you've put out you know, it's not about the loss that you money fund or and so what what festivals are saying really is that they're not postponing oh, sorry they're not cancelling they're postponing they're trying to find another date so that you can um so that they can um do that so yeah so that's that's kind of where that that sits um but there's also uh that only applies you know so if you're a if you're a contractor you're you're giving some form of service to that festival and you've invoiced the deposits or anything like that um that's how the trickle down works right is because if you've got a production company they've got to put the the stage and all that kind of stuff in but they're, they're kind of reliant on that income but it hasn't come in because the festival didn't go ahead right. so that's where the insurance comes in to help pay that stuff yep. but then you've got people who are working and they don't usually invoice until after the festival mm. so they don't they don't get scooped up in that insurance stuff mm. so now what happens is um you know so there is at the moment uh, uh I'm sure um, people are kind of familiar with the uh, the wage subsidy, and that was coming through um, through the uh, the government and IRD. Is it? Yeah, we well, you know working in government. Yeah. So and then um, and so that was all coming through there, and um, so that was helping, and um, and that was kind of based on the fact that anyone that was losing income, in this case, it's kind of more targeted towards the. Uh, um it's a uh, culture ministry of culture and heritage so it's around um uh, entertainment arts. and yeah. screen music yeah that kind of stuff arts exactly so um yeah and so with that um there's a various different pools that are kind of targeted at different sections um so it could be uh you, you know i think the, the one that's coming out which is they get a five thousand dollar grant um if you've um if you've had gigs that fallen out but there are there are organizations one that just came out yesterday or oh, monday which was apra if you're a member of apra and you've got um and you uh you know you're a songwriter you're a member of apra what happens is in those gigs what you usually do is you submit an apra uh, a playlist or rather a song list and you're generally paid off performing those original songs mm through the festival that's right it's so, a revenue stream uh yeah. and so those returns they're saying to everyone put your returns in as if you've done the gig because they'll honor those they'll honor those payments sure okay and so that's the kind of thing where you know everyone is aware of it everyone knows that there's um that they're that they're hurting so um uh 
uh, and everyone everyone within the industry is doing what they can to support where they can and and obviously being aware that you know there are going to be the few that are out there that are going to be going oh yeah this is a perfect opportunity to get some free money and uh and i'm gonna say i was doing a show when i wasn't you know and so there's all of that kind of stuff that they that the reason it becomes a little bit uh they try to make it a you know a little bit um not hard but rather they're just making sure that the right the right people are getting the money basically yeah, yeah. Because there's only so much. I'm interested to hear uh, with the Fano out there uh, if any of this has kind of um, touched them. I mean, particularly if uh, they've been in them, you know, if they've been gigs or uh, or um, work that's fallen over because of it, because of the change of levels and uh, what kind of effect it's had. Totally. Hey, kia ora tangi. Um, Glad to be back too. I'm dying. Tēnā koe. Hey, uh, so Dad, did, um, did you enjoy the festival though? Oh, totally. Uh, I, I still think it's um, so good to know that um, that one of the very few events in the country that actually cater for young people. You know, and... Um, and it's safe too, it's a safe. And, uh, and the young one from 18 down to 16 are uh, just free to do the things they want to do through music. Uh, no, 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 I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I, I just, uh, I mean, you know, and the thing is, I, I really love the, 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 the graphics, the arts, and the way that the new technology that we have today. So I watch, um, I mean, Ahua Kuariha, I'm a bit kuari on the, the particular sounds these days. So uh, I'm a little behind is what the, what the young people actually listen to. Yeah, that, that, that's really good. And so I really like that. Did, did you like it when you heard it? Yeah, yeah, I, I like the sounds. The, uh, almost sort of, yeah, it, it, different sounds. I always like um, listening to new sounds in the way we present ourselves musically, in the way sounds come. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit over some of the stuff that I, I listen to. Some of my old mates still listen to Elvis Presley. They still listen to the old kind of rock and roll of the 70s. I mean, that's okay. I'm cool, but, but that's not me. I, I always like to see new growth in the industry and uh, where, where, where we are. So um, I, I, I think that the um, uh, Sound Splash are uh, able to, uh, to provide that kind of level at uh, high quality and professionally. And um, yeah, no, no, yeah. You've, it's always great going to, to, to gigs like that because you've got huge sound systems. Oh, huge. So you, you just feel it in your body. Where you, yeah. That sub just hits you and you, you know, it's like, like you can't, you don't hear it like that at home. That's no, why no, I really no. enjoy hearing no. that music. And it's made for those kinds of sounds. Yeah, yeah. Too. In the vibration, you know, yeah. you can hear every instrument, yeah, every and, sound, they come out there, just clear, so beautiful, you know, you go boom. In not sort of kind of loud, you know, get to your ears. I'm partly deaf, but as you say, it's such a beautiful sound, you know, it reaches your soul. Kind of feel it over here, not over there, and you can feel it. And then you can can make you shift and move, and it's so nice to be able to, you know, to move with young kids. They do a book are probably one of the oldest, the oldest participants in, in the middle of the crowd. You know, there were others, but there, there seemed to be less. I didn't see as many uh, older people, you know, like I have been in in the last few gigs. But, it's a particularly uh, young festival that one. Eh? It's a particularly young festival, that one. It's full of like. Yeah, yeah. 15, but then you normally see, like, the last one that I, I've been wrangling there, there's just quite a few old, older people there, too. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, not going to play. And, uh, but what I have view, I've been listening, I put it on my Facebook, is this um, uh, this, uh, anthem gig is uh, really good. You know, with all the way out of the 70s, 80s, and the 90s, they're really good. Mm. I thought that's great. 
you know, and um, yeah, what a, what a way to uh, re to to uh, to have that uh, that voice and uh, other musician actually playing some of those music there from those musicians from the from the 70s. I, I like that particular style. I've been really enjoying on TikTok. There's some amazing musicians on there, and they've managed to just uh, find their own little corner of TikTok. And because music discovery is actually quite a difficult thing, you know, back you know, like if you turn on the radio, you only hear certain music. Even if you go on Spotify or YouTube, you get fed certain music. So actually, I've got friends, for example, the bro um, Mondo. The selector, oh, yeah. he'll, he'll constantly send me new music, you know, and beautiful music, um, because he takes that time to discover it. But I find on Facebook, I've started following some musicians who um, don't it's have on. huge followings, but for some reason, I, I kind of come across these different musicians, guitarists, real virtuoso yeah, musicians yeah. who um, are out there struggling around the world. I really appreciate it, actually. Mm. Love good music. That's yeah. on, tic on TikTok, eh? On TikTok. Yeah, really good um, uh, lyricists as well, writing bu beautiful lyrics. The way that they're... Um, um, no, I'm a bit of a goddamn TikTok addict, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I like Music. that young Tahoti girl. That, that young, young one sings all those um, in my Paki song. Visual. Yeah, I really like that particular style. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was a really, it was a, it was a really good, um, a really good uh, live concert. That one that had, uh, yeah, some, some really good tunes in it. Yeah. That's uh, and that was our, our mate Tefinua. Uh, oh yes, was, uh, with Hani. Hani putting was putting that together. Yeah. Oh yeah, together. yeah, yeah, Dread, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Hani Dread. You know that was great. That was a very smart move. Hmm. And um, oh, I'm still people. What's that? Oh no, no, no! Sorry, it's just the bit people saying my mic's still cutting out. Well, so oh well, I'll have to work on it. Sorry about that. Yeah, it sounds like a gating thing, you know. So when you go off the mic, it cuts it out because it's really in its background. Uh, it sounds a lot better now, though. Yeah, you got the yeah. Mic on. Okay. Yeah, you were in that Eba Pucky video back in the day, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, System Virtue? Yeah, yeah. yeah System yeah. Virtue. And uh, the Midi Nile, or High Year and I was on that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were taking at my place down at uh, the Puri Lake. That's right, back in the day. Yeah, back in the days. That was a good song. It was really yeah, big, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had an old Russian camera. The one they go for about three minutes, I think, or maybe even less than that. Yeah. Oh, like a film. Is, uh, the, the film, film camera. The camera. Yeah, yeah, it was a very artistic uh, video. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. And mm. um, she she got quite 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 big. Uh, did she get signed? Yeah. Off the back of that, I think so. So, for people, we need to know. I've been asked. People have been asking me, "When's Muru gonna come? When's the when's the movie Muru gonna be out?" And I said, "Well, yeah, it was supposed to happen Waitangi Day or Waitangi Week, but uh, because of COVID." Uh, for for Hudi here for uh, so we're probably looking at um, the wiki of Te Reo Māori, uh, Hepetema, and uh, it may be down in Wellington. Who, who knows? It could be with the Fakatumatuma, and uh, who knows? And uh, yep, so it's on the whole uh, uh the uh, the Muru. Mm. They, they they might as well wait for um, October fifteenth. Yeah. If they're going to yeah, wait maybe. for September. Yeah. My fault, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I, I, I think um, the Wiki or Te might be a bit um, a bit packed if um, yeah. we have anything to do with it. <laughs> it's looking quite busy. Yeah, yeah. September, October. Well, just around the corner from September. Just around the corner. Hey, Tangi uh, Kopu, what, uh, just you're talking about the Hani Totorewa series. What was that on? Was that on? It was on uh, Maori television. It was on uh, Facebook. Is that Hani Dread? Yeah. Totorewa. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, but I'm just wondering. You said they're saying it's a. Uh, 
the series. Oh, yeah, but they talking about a series, not not the not the Copa Pay anthems. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, I didn't see a series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Copa Pay anthems. Oh no, that's um. Did watch Fano Honey Two Three was. Yeah, yeah. Copa oh, okay. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Yeah, awesome band. And really amazing. I, I, I was really impressed with the vocalist that they had on that um, on that as well. So, yeah. That Kimble was cool. And uh, then your sister was, uh, was uh, MC. All right. I missed it. Of it. It's still online, bro. You can see it anytime. <laughs> I'll have to uh, probably try and play some here. I wonder if they put it on um, Spotify. Yeah, there it is. Oh, she's got no publisher kind of that would shut us down, eh? Mm, uh, she might have gone through DRM. They may shut us down, but we'll have a go, eh? See what happens. Oh, well, we'll see you later, Fano, if we get cut. If we get dumped. <laughs> oh, cool. Great. And this is the Hidden in Melbourne song. This is them live. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, you're talking about Chad Chambers? Yeah. Is that that he, he said was... He's good. Yeah, he does uh, yeah, He does a couple of tunes. Um, yeah, but all backed by Honey, the Honey Dread Band. Oh, look, there's Hang Sister Virtue. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to that. Sorry if everyone was enjoying that one. Oh, these are great songs. Yeah, this girl. These this girl kills it, man. She's like, what's her name? Cheyenne. Cyan. Cyan. Yeah. Cyan Tahuti. I'm already getting requests. It's like a radio show. Okay, I'm, I am gonna. The reason I'm gonna bounce through it, Fano, is just because we will get pinged. The algorithm will catch us. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna jump through into Nahi We Air here. Nahi We Air.
they, they, they got a live brass section on there too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They are, yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. No, the, the band, the band's tight as fuck. It's awesome. They're, they're awesome. Yeah. And um, now the other one that uh, the phone call wanted me to play was this one. Who's the phone call? Tefinua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you can check it out on Spotify. So uh, that's Spotify, Co-Papa Anthems Live. Uh, and then on Dad's page, Creative Natives, Protect Papa Papa. I think even on uh, Rawadi. Waititi. Waititi's page as well. It got posted on there so you can see the full video and the full all the performances. Oh uh, yeah, parts of it. Yep, I think there's going to be a you know because it'll also match or sort of come into um, wire to anthems as well that wire to anthems week and so yeah. And I think it's some of the uh, I think it's actually the intention is to have the original artists, artists. as well. Yeah, we've got to get David Grace over. Yeah, man. No, but I am, I am feeling a bit titchy about it, so I'm going to. Um... One more, last one. <laughs> All right. Oh, on that album? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, here's a classic. Uh... I hope. the jam when that came out man this is like we love the song oh, these yeah. guys are tight live oh yeah this is tight. a live recording yeah no tight that's yeah. dope oh yeah that's right uh Tangi Korpu that was the bro um Huta Huta Thomas passed away eh? The bro Huta. Huta Thomas. Yeah, that was said. Daddy 
Here asking about whether um, if you have multiple paintings on the go. Yes, he does. He's probably got about five or six on the go at the moment. No, I'm, I, if, if we, I'm definitely taking this night off, my bro, down in Wellington. Hey, choice. <laughs> I, I will have no jobs on this night. <laughs> What's that? What's the time, Mr. Wu? What's the time? 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 I think one o'clock. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, spooling, spooling, spooling out the nurse, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, ten o'clock, I'm usually angry with the boys. What's the time, Mr. Wu? Oh, oh, oh. What's the time, Mr. Wu? What's the time? What's the time, Mr. Wu? You know that's uh, you know that thing when you when the gas can or the gas is empty. You're, you're mad loud now, bro. Oh shit! Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Either fucking quiet or super loud. Um, when your gas tank is empty. Yeah, yeah, you're just like, oh, how long can we keep going? Oh on yeah, empty? like that one. That's a good game. So we'll, All right. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll throw we'll another one pinged. in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe we will just we'll just squeeze in. Oh yeah, that'll be great to get. Because uh, David David Grace had his. Uh, oh, I was like a year or maybe two years ago now. Jesus, concert here in Fakatani. It was great. He brought yeah, a great yeah. band. Yeah, there was only like a hundred of us there. He had a full bloody ten piece band. It was amazing. So it'll be great if we can get him back over. Get him back over to Finua. The bro just talking about energy rising, singing this, and um, I see Benita's quite. Uh, she's got a, quite a lot of stuff going on. That's Sister B from Energy Rising. Yeah, she's got a lot of stuff going on on TikTok. She's quite uh, like two or three posts a day. She's hard out. Quite funny. She's kind of leaning into the old, the old, you know, the old lady who doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah. Zero fucks. Yeah. Oh, so George, two years yeah, last two weekend. Years. That was bang on. Wow. Two years last weekend, we were out at um, where was that Hokufitu way? Oh no, uh, yeah, Taipakaya. 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 Um, at the Marae down there, at coastlands of Fakatani. And they set up one of those inflatable stages. And oh, yeah. was, uh, he killed it, man, him and his group. 
two years ago last weekend. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Sue. Good times. Good times. Yeah, that was Manu Tarau and them. Manu Tarau. Uh, the boy, uh, the he was the one that kind of organised that fundraise to, uh, to get the boat to come across. And uh, with this way at the hill, uh, all the royalty of this waiata uh, was given to two of both. And, uh, Tamakai and Moana. Eh? Tamakai Moana. Yeah, two of both down in um, Waimana. Mm. And uh, so we took the funds over there. Yeah. How's that uh, bus shelter from uh, Muru going down uh, there? I, I, I'm not too sure what's happening to that one. Yeah, I'm not too sure. You might have to uh, call your relation, uh, Miss Poynton. Oh, Tony, yeah, we did a, uh, went to a pohiri the other day for her new mahi. Oh, okay, here. Yeah. Uh, te tohu o te ora, o Ngāti Awa. Oh, okay. Ngāti Awa Health Services. Out at um, uh, Naitarangi uh, Hohiri. Naitarangi Hohiri. Oh, aye, aye. Oh. Kapai, we made it to the gas station. Oh. So I gotta pay attention. I've already played this one, eh? Yep. It is the money. It is the money. Oh wait, wait, wait. This is a. I always love this one because uh, this is this is a real upbeat one, and I love it because of um, of Rawadi as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was an amazing moment in the house when he sang that. Incredible. Russ oh, yeah. is a real party tune, this one. I love me a bit of horn section. I've been um, I'm trying to get Lord and, and Tiki to do a remix. Sure, Tangi. Catch you up next time. Kia ora. See you, bro. Got a net. Yeah, man, that horn section. Oh, net. Hey, net. How's teaching going? Hey, um, so is uh, does Mondo send you some send you music? Yeah, all the time. 
Oh like man, I'm so jealous. I've been like... Oh, you'll get flooded. Can you, just, just can you... Line. Yeah. It's obvious that ever since that, uh, that weekend at your place over Christmas and him playing his tunes, yeah, like man. I've got a, I've got a playlist of stuff that he, he played, but man, I want some more. It's so good. Mr. Selector. Oh wait, he's gone. He does. Oh, you dropped off. What was that? Tuesday, Tuesday drive on KFM. Oh yes, he's on KFM. KFM. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Live, man. They're... What? That's outrageous. So that was uh, that's Co Papa anthems on. Um, that was put together with the Creative Natives crew and our mate Tafinua, and um, uh, you can see it. That's on Spotify. So check it out. And, and also, it's, it's well, like dotted Joff around. Was Joff doing the? Oh yeah, the Joff. Thing. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Was he involved in yeah, that? That's right. Mm, artivist. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no 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 no. He wasn't on that one. Oh. Not on that. Not on that. No, he he did the White Tangy Day thing with Suzanne. Yeah. Oh, with Lawson and he did Suzanne's thing. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Different one. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. So check it out, Spotify. Uh, it's on there, and it looks like it's also um, and it's uh, on Facebook and uh, and a bunch of different pages. It's on Dad's page. Go check it out if you want to see the the videos. Sure. Yeah. And then we'll go great. back to our uh, regularly scheduled program, which is uh, whitelisted albums from uh, Loop. So thank you, Loop. <laughs> Although now that I've said that, this is actually from uh, something else, but uh, it's all good. Yeah. Hira. Epara. Eparaima. Hey, uh, I'm not too sure, but um, I'm start seeing the eyes and uh, the eyes. Oh um, yeah, they popped out of nowhere, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So I start forming the eyes. I think I'm gonna go for Kanuikitia. What the eyes can see, you know, because um, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of conversation around. Uh, around that, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, how, you know how we see things, you know, I, I didn't really, I didn't really hear the voice as a child, and, um, but I did see a lot of things, a lot of things, I, I see, I saw, uh, I, I heard a lot of, a lot of kōrero, and, um, you know, and um, yeah, so interesting thing about the eye, how we see things. And it, can, it has a language of its own, you know. You know, you can, there's a, there's a real in that, in the kanohiki there. And without really saying anything, come out of your mouth. So it's, it's a body language. The ahuatana de neko to china. Yeah, all of that so uh, um, I, I like painting like this because people say what are you painting well I don't really know and uh, till I get there and so all this is, is the form the layers and you get through the layers it, it may not be like that at the end of the day and um, yeah I, I tend to, to work like that I'm, I'm, really comfortable about painting in that particular style and um, yeah so it's become a rhythm it's the motion the feelings uh, as a painter but I I am looking at um, possibly you know uh, after doing this uh, let the 
Tui and Waiti and I talk about what's, what we're planning to do this year and what's happening in, in regards to the uh, to an exhibition that is going to happen down in Wellington and also what's happening here within our community. And, uh, yeah, and now... Uh, yeah, some we can talk about, some we can't because it... Yeah, we well, well, what you can, what you can. Just talk about what you can. Yeah, I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to Wellington. That that if we if we if we pull that one off, my father, that'll be uh, pretty epic. So that's a um, an installation uh, marking the 50 years since uh, Natamato set up their tent embassy down in Wellington. So we are looking to um, uh, construct. A installation, a structure on Parliament grounds uh, to represent that. It will be a uh, Tamiti Presents um, structure. Um, a team of us getting behind that, and within that uh, structure, we will house uh, various events, including uh, the the wider the Kopapa anthems that you just heard in the band, uh, as well as wider anthems. Uh, but it's very much a work. In progress as these things are this is uh, looking at september for maori language week which is marking 50 years also not only of the tent embassy uh, but the uh, delivery of the petition uh, and all the things that have come off the back of that so it's, uh, it's an ambitious project um, and we've been working on it for since probably august last year these things take a good 12 months uh, to to bring to fruition. Hey, got a cuz, got an arimu. I get to get the aqua, hooky at the Padonga. Yeah, so that's that. That's, uh, that. Or, also, another exciting project that we're planning to bring here to Matatua Waka. Um, but yeah, we sort of kind of can't talk about that yet because we uh, it hasn't been announced and we've got other um, partners in that one. But uh, as soon as we sign everything off, then we can start talking about that. But it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. More art, more artists, music. Um, bringing... Multidisciplinary, that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is multidisciplinary, that one. So... <coughs> It'll be some virtuoso musicians, it'll be storytelling, it'll be artists and dancers and soundscapes and, and lighting and doing that in the community, telling uh, community stories with the community. I can't say that much. Um, yeah, no, we're going to have a, a busy 2022, 2023 by the looks of it. Good stuff. We'll, we'll keep you fellas updated with our um, with our lives. I, I wonder if we'll be able to continue doing lives all the way through it. Ooh, that'll be a challenge. We might have to pull back to one day a week, maybe. I, I, you fellas don't, probably don't know this, but um, our father is a, a bloody uh, harsh taskmaster. He just goes, okay, we're doing our live, my boys. And we're like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, if we don't turn up, we don't do it, then he'll do a real haphazard one on his phone. And, um, and uh, yeah. shame us into doing it. He, look, he laughs about it. But, um, you know, it's funny because it's true, isn't it? And goes to sleep in all our Zooms. <laughs> no, all good. All good. Yeah, kia ora nā it, it is exciting. We're, we're pretty excited. Um, about it so yes it'll balance out my um, uh, local government stuff that, that's kind of, yeah. you know I guess it's a thing <laughs> actually I've got to run an election as well my oh, um, you're, uh... my term is up in October yeah um, so you got to get you got to start campaigning eh yeah well yeah Oh, it depends. It depends if anyone else puts their name in. And, and I hope they do. You know, I hope people do put their names forward and put their hands up because I think it's important that you have to go back out to 
uh, you know, the constituency, but to your people to, to seek um, your mandate to represent. Um, I do think I do a, a, a good job at the table. It's quite difficult. I do find it difficult communicating the complexities of what it is that local government does. Um, because when you start talking about the complexities, it gets really goddamn fucking boring really fast. Um, and But that's the reality of it. I can, you know, talk about and break it down into simple things. Um, but I don't think that does it justice. And, you, you know, you are dealing with, for example, let's talk three waters. People think that people are stealing um, or that the government is trying to take uh, waters out of, out of uh, public ownership. And, you know, that is a worry. Um, and I do have some concerns about the way that they are pushing this reform through. Um, and I do fear that it is one step towards um, the privatisation of water. You look around the world and the privatisation of water, you know, this is drinking water. Um, we must always be paranoid and concerned about corporate interests over a resource that can be controlled. Um, and we, I think it's right to stay paranoid about that. Uh, they aren't doing that in the current reform, but they're the reform I fear that the people who get brought in to do the mahi, which is, uh, um, you know, the infrastructure side of it, that they will be private contractors and then say in, you know, 10 or 15 years time, because they've been doing the work as private contractors of um, underneath the public um, uh, governance or oversight that, that, you know, it's only another step to privatisation like happened with our telecommunications when they sold telecom off. They didn't just sell the company, they sold the goddamn yeah, wire. Right. And they not only sold the wire, they sold the land around the wire. You know, and then you had to introduce regulation to break up telecom. That's why you've got course and they had to make them separate because they were just controlling everything. Um, they're saying that they won't do that with the water, but you know, the reality is, is that Parliament is, well, you know, the government is the government. If they have the numbers in the House, they can pass the legislation and you get a right-leaning government and that's what can happen. So I quite like that there's quite a path, there's quite a distance to privatisation at the moment. I feel like the Three Waters reform is, could potentially be just that little bit of an incremental step towards privatisation. Um, but the reality is that there has been successive uh, local government politicians, i.e. councillors, who have um, pandered to constituents who have said, my main thing is, is keep the rates down. And they haven't spent money over successive terms on water infrastructure. And therefore that infrastructure is substandard and you have what happened in Havelock North where a whole lot of people got sick. And if you look around the country and all of their resource consents of district council's water supply, which as a regional council, we regulate and we give them those consents, a lot of the infrastructure isn't up to standard. There's some councils who the infrastructure is up to standard, but there's a lot that aren't. And councils are, you know, struggle. A lot of small councils struggle to, um, they're footed with the bill because you know, past councils haven't kept the maintenance up. See, like as soon as I start talking about this stuff, I think um, it's quite difficult to talk about this stuff inside of perhaps, well, maybe it's just the the, the, um, the context of a Tamiti art show. Maybe I've got to have my own stream. <laughs> <laughs> local government, people who want to hear about local government stuff can tune in. So anyway, that, that, that yeah, I do actually have a, a campaign. I do have to I think I've got another term. I think um, I do have another term in me at this stage. Um, three years, in three years you get your feet under the table, you kind of figure out where the, uh, you know, where the levers are. It's a team sport. You don't hmm. know, you don't know everything about everything. They're really big, complex organisations. Um, you need to, it's all about relationships, relationships with your fellow councillors, but also relationships with staff, because staff know where everything is. Um, and if they don't want to do things, then they don't do it. 
it's like you know managers walking in thinking that they're the boss but you know if, if everyone that they manages if, if all the people that they are managing tell them to get fucked then um you know shit doesn't happen um people think that counselors are the bosses that they we walk in and and say what happens and uh that's actually not the way that it rolls um you make policy shifts and they're incremental shifts um i'm quite proud of the fact that we you know it might be symbolic kind of like you know in the house where now you don't have to wear a tie you can wear a tonga um now at the regional council in the bay of plenty um all of our council buildings the ones in Fakatani and Tauranga anyway that had flag poles um we used to fly the tino flag uh on waitangi day and when a prominent maori leader passed or on other days of significance otherwise it was the new zealand flag and the bay of plenty regional council flag that flew every day um, but we made a policy shift in terms of our, our flag flying policy um, to fly the Tino flag every day next to the other flags. Um, and the Māori councillors didn't even have to pass that motion. <coughs> our Pākehā colleagues passed and seconded that motion. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. we only had one person uh, vote against it. Um, and I, I took that as a win in terms of diplomacy with our fellow councillors uh, that we, that the Māori councillors could sit back and allow our Pākehā colleagues, our partners in the treaty, Ngā Tangata Tiriti, to pass that motion. Um, I thought that was he tohu te rā o te uh, o tā mātou Aye, mahi. The, the big shift. Yeah, the shift. big shift. The shift it's of the consciousness. Shift. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, mm, no. um, I think I'm, I, you know, I've been contemplating doing some TikToks around, around what it is that local government does. I think it's really important. You know, hey, Māori marched up and down the country last year to get Māori wards. Marched up and down the country yep. to have representatives. Um, because we're like, hey, we need to be sitting at the table while. You know, we need to be knowing what is actually going on uh, in that space because there's a lot of reform. In the future, we may not, you know, this is just quietly, we may not have um, the same kind of local government as we have had in the past. There may not be, I mean, can you imagine a town without a mayor? We may not have mayors. We may not have that kind of setup, possibly. Um, yeah. We're going through a lot of reform now. Well, I mean, then it is, it's happening. Yeah, it's it's happening across the board. Eh? It's like everyone is having to rethink their shit uh, and and what and kind of break out of uh, out of sort of the the status quo. Uh, I know that um, you know. So that's you know whether that's events. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions around. Uh, award shows because there's a you know I'm connected with a lot, quite a few of the um, major awards uh, shows in the country, and then and uh, because they can't be put on, it's like oh how do you like, what's the point of them like what what are the what's what value do they bring and uh, and and f for what purpose and so really having to re uh, reconstitute the the, the way. Or that you know the the components into something new, and so um, yeah, it makes sense that it's um, that that's being done everywhere, local governments. You know how how we do things. Well, hey, we, um, we, yep. I was just going to say uh, I can see Dad's on his phone now, so maybe we should call it. I know that we started a bit late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, seven thirty. Yeah, no. I've got to go and have some kai. Yeah, I've got to go and have a kai. But anyway, yeah, really good to be back online again. Uh, and um, we talk more about this and uh, see who we're going to have for our money here on the weekend. Uh, yeah, so good to be back on the air again. So going to be an interesting year. 2022. I promise not to dance in my uh, TikToks, Nate. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you to everyone on Twitch and on Facebook. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna try and keep to our, our regular schedule, which is Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, and uh, yep, there are um, quite a few uh, people who want to come on the show and uh, hang out with us, uh, musicians, netballers, <laughs> um, and uh, lots of other people just to, to sit down and court it all with us and with Dad while he's painting, doing his works. Um, yeah, so let's see you all soon. All right, choice.